Welcome to Under the Ring Pro Wrestling Conversations. My name is Phil Strum. So glad you're with me today. Well, I had the opportunity to participate in the WrestleMania press junket on Friday morning in Philadelphia at the downtown Marriott. I had the opportunity to briefly catch up with a series of WWE wrestlers and NXT uh, personalities. It was uh, Rey Mysterio, Natalia, Roxanne Perez, Lyra Valkyria, and the voice of NXT, Vic Joseph. It was a great experience, and I took some uh, audio from it, so that's here for you today. So here we go with my experience in the WrestleMania press junket under the ring. What's it mean to you to be sharing the WrestleMania stage with your son again? It's, it's the best feeling in the world. I thought last year was really cool to be able... Well, it's been three years now. The first year we got to wrestle together in a tag team match. The second year I wrestled against him for the first time, which was very intense. And now, once again, we meet again. And uh, I was just hoping that last year was the one that set him straight. But unfortunately, he didn't learn his lesson. So now we have to repeat what happened last year. He's so good, and it's such a different style than you. Yes. So, like, people will probably... I, I see him more, like, knowing your career. Like, I remember you in Psychosis. Yep. And I see him more as a Psychosis style than yes. a Rey Mysterio. Do yes. you see that, too? Like, and what, what, what kind of things do you see in his game? Every now and then, I see a little bit of Psychosis in him. I see a little bit of Eddie... I see the, the characters that he's grown up watching and learning from, subconsciously or not, but uh, he has a little bit of every single one that he's uh, been watching. And he likes to study a lot of uh, psychosis tapes. He likes to uh, study a lot of Art Bar, Eddie Guerrero tapes. So, uh, um, you know, as a father, there's definitely a sense of pride of, watching his growth and seeing him kind of just take his own path because now we finally separated. Yeah. They know him as Dominic and they know me as Ray. And then being able to be still be in the ring with him too is kind of... It's beautiful. Yes. And having this showcase for Lucha Libre at WrestleMania this year with, uh, with four of the best in there. That's... Uh, what, what does this mean to you? That That is a... That is a big... Uh, a big honor for our sport for uh, the representatives in this match. The fact that I see a lot of young Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee, I truly believe that the day that I am no longer here, he is the one that's going to carry that Lucha Libre style and that representation of what Lucha Libre is, the mask, to the next level. Santos, uh, also being a second-generation wrestler, putting in the work, putting in the grind, you know, he understands what WWE is all about and and to see my son in there too you know uh, learning from all of us at the same time because he is the rookie of the three and I'm sorry of the four and and uh, it's just I'm honored to be able to, to put Lucha Libre in the spot that it is now because I've done it with that intention always representing Lucha Libre Great. Well, congratulations on everything you're doing you and look much. forward to WrestleMania. Thank, Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. First thing I want to know about is uh, the training that's going on with you and TJ, the sort of the new the dungeon. And what, what was the genesis behind that and how did what, tell me about it? During the pandemic, um, we didn't have, we, we were struggling to get to the performance center for you know, extra ring time. Because we didn't have live events, we, you know, it was just a very difficult time for everyone. And um, TJ asked Vince McMahon if he could have a ring, and he said he wanted to use the ring to be able to help coach the girls during the pandemic. Right. Because the girls wanted to get in the ring and they wanted extra ring time, and uh, we were blessed enough to be able to to, to get a ring, a beautiful WWE ring, and. We started our own dungeon, um, which is what my grandfather started in 1955. My grandfather trained so many legendary people in wrestling, um, like Gorilla Monsoon. My grandfather, bo- uh, my grandfather broke in Fritz von Erich yeah. into the business, and um, it all started in the dungeon. My uncles Brett Hart, Owen Hart, the British Bulldogs, Davy Boy Smith, Dynamite Kid, my dad. Um, so many, so many incredible wrestlers came from the dungeon. So my husband and I decided that we wanted to kind of start our own dungeon. 
and we do that um, we do that near our home in Florida and it's amazing so many performers from around the world not just the WWE Good come process. to our ring yeah I want to I want to work with everybody anybody that has a deep passion and a love for this I want to work with them and so we've been blessed enough to have so many amazing performers work with us that just are brilliant and it's our it's the dungeon is our way of giving back it's our way of reigniting our love and passion for the industry but also helping people fine tune yeah um, it's we we're it's for intermediate to advanced we don't train people really from the ground up because we, we work with a lot of people that are already kind of got their you know basics down but but we build a foundation so it's it's all it's all about building a foundation people like Liv Morgan have trained with us Raquel um, Angelo Dawkins Tahuti uh, VFAB uh, Apollo Cruz um, so many different I'm just the list goes on and on Shotzi Nick Cross um so many, so many gifted athletes have come in and trained with us, but also not just from WWE. I always say, like, I don't, I don't go, hey, you're not in WWE, you can't train with us. If you love this and you have a passion for this, I'm down. So you've been around this, you know, your whole life, your whole career. Yes. What's the earliest memory that you have of WrestleMania? Just how, how, how much has it changed? You've been here for so many of them. Now. Well, my, I've been, I actually have a Guinness World Record for being in the most WrestleMania matches of any woman in WWE. Congratulations. Um, thank you. I've been a part of 13, um, and I've just been so blessed and lucky to, to have been involved in so many. Um, but, but I... For me, I think about like my family and what my family's contributed to WrestleMania. My dad was a part of WrestleMania too with Brett. My little goatee. Yeah, Andre. And, and with Andre, Andre the Giant pitched for my dad and Brett to be the last two people in the ring with him. Um, and my dad, until his you know last few months left on this earth, he would always talk about that moment, what it meant to him, and it was one of the shining moments of his life. Um, working at WrestleMania with Andre the Giant. Brett, when you think about Brett, Brett's had some of the most historical matches in WrestleMania history. WrestleMania 12, the Iron Man match with Shawn Michaels. WrestleMania 13, that match with Steve Austin that everybody talks about. Um, my favorite WrestleMania match, WrestleMania 10 with my uncle Owen Hart. Brett versus Owen, brother versus brother. Um, Brett pitched for Owen to be in that match because he wanted Owen to finally get his flowers. And it was such a special moment for Owen in his career because he finally was able to be recognized as being great. Owen was waiting and fighting and struggling for an opportunity when so many people kept telling him, you're not enough, you're too small, or you're, you're not this, or you're not that. Owen always knew what he was. And if Brett hadn't fought for him to get that moment, he might not have had that moment. But Owen deserved everything and more. And I was so happy to see Owen shine on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania 10. Well, congratulations on everything you're doing and Thank accomplishing. You. So, new side of Roxanne Perez uh, heading into Stand and Deliver. What's it been like for you to kind of share that with the fans? It's been awesome. You know, I I think last year I came in as a fan. Of course, I've been a fan of this since I was 10 years old. So to come in with the moniker, the prodigy, on my back, and and uh, you know, being surrounded by all of my heroes, people that I looked up to, and then being women's champion within a few months it was it was definitely a lot of pressure and obviously doubts went through my head of like am I good enough to be this champion and like am I living up to everything and I think I'm throwing all of those those thoughts away I'm, I'm done listening to those doubts and and now I am 100% confident in who I am I know I'm the prodigy I know I'm the best and I know that I will become two-time and extremely champion it's pretty fun to see on social media some of the back and forth with the photos of you as a fan, Lyra commenting them on them when she was a fan. Yeah. So you guys have both been a part of this yeah. for a long time. What's it like to be in this moment now? What, what, what is it like to be part of WrestleMania weekend when you have something like this, a huge match like this with somebody similar path? It's, it's still so crazy to me. And... Um, like I, I think it's really cool. As much as I, uh, uh, I don't know how I feel about Lyra Valkyria, uh, and I might have to break her arm this weekend. I will give it to her. She loves this, and she has been working towards this dream for almost a decade, just like me. So um, now we're both here, two of the best in the NXT brand, fighting for what we both want. But I just wanted a little bit more. This is probably one of the biggest years in WWE history. 
where does the future go for Roxanne Perez after Stand and Deliver? The future is bright, I'll tell you that. I, uh, I, I, I have big, really big hopes for the, for the next few years. Um, like I said, I, 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 I want to be the best. I want to be remembered. I want to make history. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. Thank you very much. What's it like to be a part of uh, WrestleMania weekend? It's amazing to be walking into Stand and Deliver, uh, our biggest show, as part of the, the biggest WrestleMania of all time, as champion. You couldn't write it. It's amazing. What's it been like uh, for you coming to the U.S. and uh, wrestling after your run over in uh, NXT UK? Oh, it's been a journey for sure. Uh, the climate change has been a big struggle for me, uh, but the U.S. has fantastic desserts, so win, win lose. WWE Performance Center. Uh, what has it been like learning there? Has there been anybody? Is there anybody there who's been a particular mentor to you? Anything like that? Yeah, we have some uh, great coaches in the Performance Center. Uh, Johnny Moss was my coach in NXT UK, and even a little bit before I came to WWE. Um, so he's always been a fantastic help to me. It's been pretty fun to see all the NXT UK talents kind of mixing in onto onto the NXT in the US after mm -hmm. after that changed. What, what did that experience do for you as a performer in NXT UK? NXT UK, uh, well, it was my first WWE experience. Um, I'll always hold NXT UK very, very close to my heart. Uh, we had something very, very special. We were a very big family. Um, so, yeah, it was amazing. It was fantastic to, um, to have that before coming here. What's different? Is there anything different now that you're, you know, it's live television every week? Is there, is there, yeah, yeah, what, it's, what it's very different. Um, I mean, yeah, we used to... Um, we used to do NXT UK every uh, month or so, and then having uh, live NXT um, every single Tuesday. It was, it's huge because the ball is constantly rolling. You don't get to you don't get to sit in any uh, uh, joy or disappointment or whatever it is. You just got to keep going on to the next one, and you're only as good as your last match. So you got to keep going. So you and Roxanne, I, I saw there was a tweet I think about her meeting AJ Lee as a young girl, and that you you had talked about that. Is it kind of fun to see kind of the similar paths that you guys have been on, but just on you know completely different sides of the world? Yeah, we it's it's insane that I saw that picture. 2014 or something yeah, like that was it? Yeah, I was a, I was a huge fan, and I used to look at uh, all performers I looked up to meeting fans, yeah. um, and I had that photo saved on my phone, wow. um, which is wild. And then to have posted that exact photo, um, just a huge, huge coincidence that really makes you feel like. I don't know, like it was always supposed to happen, or that like fate is a, is a huge thing. So to be now walking in against that girl that I put a photo of uh, as champion in Sound of Delivery, it's insane. It's got to mean a lot to be a fan of this and then eventually be at the level that you're at. Like, yeah. what kind of perspective does that give you? Um, it's always, like, I feel like it's a huge pro for me. To, I know what it's like to be on both sides of the barricade. Um, that's that's what made me fall in love with this. Is uh, when you're watching, you know, an incredible match. Um, for everyone in the room to be on the same journey, it's like an electricity that you can't describe. And sometimes, even you know, when you watch it, it doesn't translate. Like it happens in the moment, and then it's gone. And yeah. it's just like you remember how it made you feel. Yeah. Um, and you know, the feeling is is still the same when you're when you're in the ring. It, it, it's even better. It's bigger. It's such a rush, and it's something that I like. It's, it's so hooking and addictive. Um, so yeah. So I've been following your career since uh, House of Hardcore. Oh, because I oh. love Poughkeepsie. All right. So, uh, uh, how is how is your career as a broadcaster grown over the time that you've been with NXT and with WWE? Well, you know, I got signed to the WWE. I actually was with the Cleveland Browns at the time, and so. Ironically, that was the year they didn't win a game. And so the last time I was with the Cleveland Browns was when they had one of the worst seasons in NFL history and joined the WWE in 2017. But House of Hardcore dates all the way back to 2012. And Rhino is actually the godfather to my kids. Oh, nice. Um, I met him just on regular independence, and I love wrestling. You know, I've yeah. loved this industry. I've always wanted to be in it. So while I was in radio covering NCAA, covering Major League Baseball, on my off weekends, I would get in a car with Rhino and Ben Boone and Johnny Gargano and Greg Iron and, and make these little towns to learn. And met Tommy Dreamer, and he gave me the opportunity, and he believed in me, and he said, hey, 
do this, try to do this, make it this way. And so I'm learning and grabbing these pieces. So when I got here, I was I hit the ground running and I already had an idea of what to do. And then it was two oh main event, and then two oh five, then NXT UK, then Monday Night Raw, then NXT. So it's the ups and the downs, but the one thing that I have learned about myself as a broadcaster is being able to adapt. You have to adapt in football if the you know a game changes, yeah. and then and in baseball, and in life. I mean, look at the pandemic; we all had to adapt. Yeah. And so, personally, I learned how to adapt. That was probably the biggest, even life lesson that I've learned so far in commentary. What does prep look like for a big show like Stand and oh. Deliver for Vic Joseph? To be fair, there really isn't much prep because now we go out there and we just do it. You know, it's not week to week; it's all led to this. It's all led to this moment. But for me, I always make sure that I've followed up and I've wa- I know every now and again I'll mess up a move or I'll give you the wrong day or I'll give you the wrong stat and there's some guy on the internet who, who will let me know but we're live and, and you own up to it. I think a couple weeks ago I called uh, Baron Corbin's uh, end of days deep six and then uh, someone called me out that they've actually posted on social media and I just wrote, ooh, my bad. Own up to it. You know, there's no reason to hide and so and there's... There's a lot of prep week to week, not so much now. We can hang out with you guys nice. and hang out with the fans. What is it like working with Booker T? Love it. Oh, my God. People will always say in comments of this and that. It is so fun because it's so unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to say. You don't know how he's going to say it. You don't know um, what's going to get thrown at you. But it goes back to the word that I used earlier, adaptability. I have to adapt to Booker. And it makes it fun. It keeps me on my toes. It's never stagnant. It's never stale. Uh, Shawn Michaels has even said the yin and the yang that they have. And I think it adds something different. I think we're different than any of the other announced teams. I've said it a few times today as well. I think we're in the golden age of WWE announcing. I think all three teams are so good that you can go back through the annals of time and you can't find three better teams three better lead announcers three better color commentators of overall the whole package than what we have right now speaking of that just wrapping up um, what's Michael Cole mean to the announcers in WWE and to WWE in general he's the greatest of all time he is the narrator of my generation and, and I say that because I can go back through being in the crowd, you know, um, 17th consecutive WrestleMania for me, going back all the way to 23. He was at the table. Yep. Heist of the Century, he was at the table. WrestleMania 30, he was at the table. 32, he was in Dallas with 101,000 people. He's been there every week in, every week out. He is an invaluable piece. You can't put a price tag on how valuable Michael Cole is to the company, really to the fans who are now starting to acknowledge just how great he is. And to me personally, um, you know, my father passed away in October, and no one was going to take me off that show. I did the show that day. He died uh, Tuesday morning. I did the show Tuesday night. I didn't let anybody know except for those that needed to. And Michael Cole has been in that. And so he's invaluable to me, and he's the greatest mentor, the greatest boss uh, I've ever had. And I don't know if any of us will truly understand how important he is until he actually says his goodbye. And I don't think that's going to happen for a long time. I hope it doesn't happen for a long time because I still have a lot more learning to do under his tree. And I think he's got a lot more matches to call. Very cool. 